Everyone mute, please. Good morning. Welcome to our Zoom Unity of Kanawha Valley Sunday service. We're so happy you're here. We'll begin our service this morning with the ringing of the bell and the lighting of our Christ candle. And we light this candle at Unity to remember that spirit that we each carry within us. If now you'll speak with me our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Now please hold that within your heart for just a minute as we become centered for this spiritual service. And now let's affirm it together once more. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. And now we'll hear from Ron and the band with our opening songs. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Nice to uh, be seen <laughs> and uh, here with the masked marauders, Ryan and Jeff. <laughs> and um, I'm going to start off with, in uh, with Surely the Presence. <laughs> I see glory on its face. 
you, Ron, Ryan, and Jeff. That was beautiful. Welcome to Unity of Kanawha Valley. We're so happy you're here this morning. I have just a couple of little announcements. And the first one being that um, we are continuing our daily word discussion on our Zoom group daily at 530, except for Sunday. So please tune in to this Zoom channel and join in the discussion if you'd like. We would more than welcome you. And the other announcement, don't forget in your giving as you, as we come into the giving season, please remember Unity of Connell Valley. Our church is still open. We're doing good. We're not open, but we're um, running and keeping the church there for you. We want to be there when all this is over with and we can all get together. And that's something that we all look forward to someday very soon. So thank you for that. And I will let you um, turn it over to Scott now. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome, shalom, namaste, and aloha. The light in me greets the light in you. My name is Sky Kirshner. I want to welcome you to Unity Sunday Online. Thank you for being with us from wherever you are. And yes, we are still online as some were talking uh, before the service today. New cases in West Virginia, the highest numbers that we've ever had on Friday for new positive cases of COVID. So we are certainly not out of the woods yet, in fact, we are more deeply in the woods than we've ever been before. And at the same time, it doesn't necessarily feel that way. And so we really got to look at this and look at our, our actions and the choices that we're making uh, because the numbers are increasing. We are among the, the top 10, uh, or there were 10 states on Friday whose numbers were the highest that they've ever been since this whole thing began. West Virginia was one of them. So thank you for being with us online and thank you for keeping yourself and your neighbors safe. It is a sign of your love for our community when you practice carefulness. The mission of Unity of Kanawha Valley is to provide you with a welcoming community of love, acceptance and spiritual growth. We celebrate our unity in being alive together. And at the same time, we affirm our diversity that each of us is on our own journey of spiritual growth. It's my personal goal that you'll feel welcome while you're here with us today, that you feel free to be yourself and feel free to explore some ideas that might be useful in your life. Today, we're going to be exploring the daily word from Tuesday because it just blew me away. I sent it out to, uh, to the Unity email list and I got so many responses back. The title of this, uh, the Unity uh, message uh, for Tuesday was Unity in Diversity. If you want to know about Unity, you're already online. You can check us out after the service. And finally, let us know if you need help. Please let us know. Prayer is a central part of what we're about here, so let's do that right now. If you feel comfortable, would you soften your gaze or close your eyes? Take a breath. Let a smile come to your face and say silently to yourself, I honor the light in each person including myself. I honor the light in each person, including myself. And if you would give yourself a nice big stretch and a nice big yawn. Oh, oh, imagine you're touching someone you love or if you're with someone you love, touch them right now. And in your mind's eye, turn to them, look at them in the eye and say, thank you for being with me on this journey. Thank you for being with me 
on this journey. And is our, as is our practice, I want to may give a lot of gratitude for everyone. Thank you for being with us here today. Your being here is part of the world that we're creating today. Every small thing you do makes a difference in your life and in the life of other people. Every small thing you do. I wanna thank the universe, God, the source of all life and love for another day of life on this amazing journey. I wanna thank everyone who's made this service possible. For Pam and for Blue, for Stephen and our board, Barbie, Jamie, Rich, Peggy, Laura, Kathy, for Ron and Ryan and Jeff, and I think Alicia, for our musicians, for Peggy, our worship leader today, for Rich, our Zoom Meister, for our amazing prayer chaplain, Sharon, Janet, Kate, and Marianne, for our daily word reader, who is a mystery to me, as much of the world is, but I wanna thank you. And for our junior bell ringer today, I think that was a cowbell that Peggy rang today, and I wanna thank you for being our bell ringer today. I want you to know that I'm lifting up every member and friend every day I go through our list. I'm so grateful for the chance to walk with you on this journey that we're on together. And I want to remind you that God is our source. The pen for your life and for our life together is in your hand. And a new day is dawning for us all. And so let's spend a few moments in an extended period of silence as we consider the truth of our lives and ask for guidance for the direction of today and for the rest of the week. You might begin by noticing the sounds that are in the room. You might notice sounds from outside of the room. You might notice your own body and the sensations of your body, the support from the floor, the chair, the sofa, the bed. the points of contact between you and the other elements of this world. You might notice the feeling of air on your arms or on your face, your sense of the temperature in the room. And you might notice your breathing this cycle of exchange of giving and receiving the most elemental level of giving and receiving that we experience thousands of times every day, frequently without even noticing. And so we pay attention to this standard miracle of our lives. And as we notice our breathing, we might notice a calming, a sense of peace. Jesus said, seek ye the kingdom. The kingdom is within. The kingdom is in this present moment. It is at hand. It is among you. It is in your midst. And so as we enter into the spaciousness of this kingdom, we bring our questions, we bring our hopes, we bring our intentions for ourselves and for the world.
This is a place of healing, a place where all life springs forth, a place of connection between our bodies and life, our bodies and the source of all life. This is a place of both cure and acceptance when the cure is not what we expected it to be. This is a place where we honor that every cell of our body knows how to coordinate with everything else within the body and within our universe. We trust our bodies and we give our bodies what our bodies need so that we can be at our fullest potential. This is a place of abundance, a place of prosperity, a place of sufficiency, where we know that there is more than enough in every moment there is more than enough and we are enough just as we are. This is a place of love, a place of connection, a place of relationship, of forgiveness, of reconciliation a place where we know that underneath the manifest divisions among us, there is an underlying unity. We are both one in the spirit of God, which pervades all things, all places, everywhere, equally, without exception. We are one in our common humanity, shared with everyone else who is alive and has ever been alive. And we are one within ourselves. All of the disparate parts of our body working together as one. And finally, this is a place of guidance where those who knock are answered, where the door is open, when we seek help, when we seek guidance, when we seek a direction, we turn within and we listen to that still small voice of intuition. It has a sense of what is ours to do and what is ours to let go of. And it's from this place that we reach out to anyone, anywhere, in any need or trouble. Those living in fear, those who are separated from people they love, those who are isolated, those who are feeling sick and terrible, those who are struggling to take the next breath, those who are suffering with addictions, those who are in recovery, those who are feeling that life is not worth spending another day. We know that God's spirit is available to everyone equally without exception. This is a spirit of love. It is a spirit of companionship and presence. No one is alone except in our own minds. And so we remember this. We remember those who are suffering, including ourselves. And we know that God's presence is with us in all moments, at all times, in all places. And for this, we are grateful.
Now the Daily Word will be read by Stephen Keith. The Daily Word for today, Sunday, October 18th, 2020, is Steadfast. I am a steadfast spiritual seeker. No matter where I may be on my path, sometimes my spiritual life feels easy and sometimes it feels hard. There are times I enjoy new insights, blissful clarity, and peace. But at other times, I may struggle, feeling stuck and directionless, or even lonely on my walk with God. At times like these, I renew my commitment to my spiritual path. Although my attention may have wandered, divine presence within me has always remained steadfast, as near as my next thought. Wherever I am in space, time, or consciousness, I discover the love, the strength, and the wisdom of God expressing through me. And today's scripture from the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verses nine and 10. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. Here's a new song uh, written by writing partner John Wickstrom, and uh, it's about uh, living in the moment, making every moment count. It's called Dance Till the Music Stops. One, two, three. <laughs>
turn a twist and shout Let it go, enjoy the show Don't sit this one out Live your secret wish Fill your bucket list Make the world that fills your thoughts While the flame still burns While the smoke still our turn Dance till the music stops While the flame still burns While the spirit yearns Ron, Ryan, Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, dance till the music stops. Well, welcome everybody and welcome to our friends on Facebook uh, who are joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, I've got a little, uh, just a little joke. Uh, do you know what the uh, father buffalo said to the son buffalo uh, when he sent him off to school? What did the buffalo say to his son as he sent him off to school? Bye, son. Bye, son. If you need extra time for that, let me know. Feel free to text me. I'll give you a hand. All right, would you put your hand on your heart, please, and repeat after me. This is my heart. Through it, I am connected to my neighbor, to my source, and to myself. I'm learning to trust it in all things, and I am grateful, amen. Well, I, uh, as I mentioned, I was so taken by the Daily Word for Tuesday, uh, actually it was Monday, October 12th, it was on diversity. I wanna read this to you, and then I have a couple of thoughts uh, to share with you about it. This is, it's just so beautiful. I honor the sacredness of all beings. I encounter a magnificent variety of people in my neighborhood, schools, workplace, and community. We may be different in cultural backgrounds, gender, beliefs, appearance, or in a myriad of other ways but we are all expressions of God. We are all expressions of God. I celebrate the diversity of the human family and I am grateful for my place in it. I bless our oneness as spiritual beings and I also honor our differences I bless our oneness and I honor our differences. I show respect for all people and am eager to learn about cultures and customs other than my own. I open my heart to all others in spirit of friendship and inclusion. And as I do, my world expands. I salute the light within each person and the sacredness of all beings. We are one in spirit. Well, uh, as I mentioned, I sent this out to everyone on our Unity mailing list, over 300 people. I got so many responses back. 
And this, of all the ideas that, that we have at Unity, I would say this is the one that's closest to my heart and the reason that I was willing to hang out with Unity for as long as I have. I believe this completely, this statement. I am, it is my intention to live in this statement. And I think unity is coming pretty darn close to embodying this in lots of different ways. None of us are perfect. Certainly no organization is perfect. And yet we have this beautiful intention. This is what's meant by the phrase, it takes a village. We need everybody. We need young, old, crazy, sane, hard workers, not hard workers, creative people, not creative people. It takes a village. I think of this as sort of the pizza pie theory of the community. You need a lot of different slices to have a good pie. I'm up at Canaan today. It, uh, it did frost overnight on Friday night. And I was uh, playing around with the little gas uh, insert in the fireplace. And it's got this remote on it. And the remote wasn't working very well. And so I changed out the batteries and it still wasn't working. And then I thought, so, so the remote's supposed to turn the, the, the fireplace on and off based on the temperature. So it's a thermostat kind of remote control for this little fireplace thing. And the remote control, as I was looking at the manual, has this thing called a dip switch, which means that you can pair it up with the receiver. And I started to wonder if maybe the thing was malfunctioning because it was getting interference from some other place. So I switched the dip switch and I got it working. Yay. But I was thinking about this word dip switch. I think DIP stands for, this was an early form of like Bluetooth. And it was a way of pairing up two, two devices uh, wirelessly. And I think DIP stands for something like digital blah, 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 blah. But the word dip switch really stuck with me and I couldn't figure out why for a while. And then I realized it reminded me of the word dip stick. You remember the word dip stick, right? That's what we use to make sure the oil in an engine, whether there's enough oil or not. So we consult the dip stick in the engine. The word dipstick when I was growing up was the term of endearment, in quotes, said to a person when someone did not like you. You dipstick. I remember with pain being called a dipstick any number of times mostly by classmates, sometimes by teachers. It was a term that would have frustration behind it. It was a term designed to hurt you and put you in your place. My daughter just messaged me and she said, you are not a dipstick dad. Wow, thank you, Maria. I appreciate all expressions of love and healing for the kind of pain that we have all suffered as we've grown up. You may remember in the four, uh, let's see, the four agreements, the process of growing up is a process of teaching you to not be yourself. And this is one of the ways that that is done with these terms that our peers and our elders put to us 
that describe us as not as being too far out of the circle of how you're expected to be. You're not smart enough. You're not attractive enough. You're not competent. These are the three main concerns in the United States. You don't look right. You don't look like us. You are not good enough. Sky, stop being such a dipstick. This was a way of saying that your differentness from the group was not appreciated. Either get in line or get off the island. Now there's something in the makeup of human beings that recognizes from our hunter gatherer days that being connected with the group is essential for our survival. All mammals, especially humans, are born helpless. We need other people to survive. When it dawns on us as toddlers that we, this world is not our oyster, we need the people around us in order to just make it to the next day. To be threatened with getting kicked off the island or kicked out of the group strikes us at our most primitive fear core. The amygdala in our brain goes crazy. Don't risk being separated from the group. That's how you die. And it is true that we are stronger together. That's how we survived in hunter-gatherer groups. And words like this are designed to keep us in line. Ironically, paradoxically, these words also make us weaker and they separate our unity because they create division and discord where we could have had harmony. What happens when the dipsticks who got voted out of the group unite and now are bigger than the folks that first kicked them off the island. The movie Revenge of the Nerds is the perfect example of what happens when all those uncool people that you didn't let into your social group become the computer programmers and the accountants who are now running our world. Thank God, in Revenge of the Nerds, they didn't decide to kill off all of the jocks. I don't even remember how that movie ended, so, but I hope you get my point. We are stronger because and when we accept our diversity than if we try to create exclusive divisions. Now, I'm sorry to say that the church historically is one of the main promoters of the kind of thinking that says, we are stronger when we only have people who are like us and we get rid of everyone else. The term excommunication means you are no longer welcome at communion. You are no longer permitted to commune with God. In that system, the only way you can commune with God is through the elements of the bread and the wafer. And excommunication says, you are so different from us that you don't belong here. You will no longer have access to God as we understand God. My mother, Irish Catholic, married a Protestant. She was not permitted to have the service in the church. She got married to my father in the porch of the rectory of the priest's house. That was as far in as my father was allowed to come because he didn't want to convert. My mother, when she got divorced, was no longer welcome at the communion table because if you were divorced, you were excommunicated. 
many, many folks have experienced the pain of what it is to be ostracized, set apart, and declared somehow unworthy because of choices that you made that seemed and were right for you. This is especially strange because Jesus invited everyone to the table. There was no one who was not invited to the, everyone was invited to the table. There's only one group of people Jesus really had a problem with. Those were hypocrites. And yes, he was very judgmental towards folks around hypocrisy. And who were the main hypocrites he was mad at? The religious hypocrites. And why was he mad at the religious hypocrites? Because they were doing that same thing of making the table exclusive. Phil Golly, who's a Catholic, uh, sorry, who's a Quaker, uh, wrote a beautiful book. What if the church were Christian? What if the church were Christian? This is a fantastic book. It's a Quaker minister, served many churches, written many books. Uh, and uh, he writes that shunning seems, shunning is that is the term, the, 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 the somewhat biblical term used to ostracize people who aren't like you. Shunning seems so far removed from the character of Jesus that one can't help but wonder why certain of his followers embrace that tradition. Nowhere in the gospels does Jesus advocate this practice. If Jesus had shunned anyone, it would likely have been those who were doing the shunning. The apostle Paul, however, a generation after Jesus, becomes sort of zealous in advising early Christians not to keep company with certain people. Fornicators, coveters, idolaters, drunkards, railers, extortionists, ex extortionists, and those who cause division. Golly notes, such is the human passion for shunning and exclusion that we happily sought additional reasons to exclude others. Quakers, 150 years ago, disqualified from their fellowship people for adding buttons and collars to their clothing because they believed that buttons and collars were not plain, that they were a grievous offense to God. And so it's always been. Communal uniformity became a priority of the church right after the death of Jesus. It, he wasn't, uh, can I say that? He wasn't cold in the grave. That's a weird thing to say about Jesus. He wasn't dead for very long before the disciples were already thinking about who's in and who's out. They came to Jerusalem and they had a conference. The very first time the disciples got together to confer over something, what were they confirming about? They were discussing and voting on whether people who were not Jewish could become Christians without first becoming Jews. Whether Gentile Christians had to observe the Jewish rituals before they became Christians, or could they just come from being Greek or Roman or whatever they were and go right into a relationship with God. And by the way, what this meant was if you were a male who wasn't Jewish and those Christians who were saying, you have to be Jewish before you can become Christian, this meant you'd have to be circumcised. So not a small decision, right? And so time and time again, the church, when faced with a choice between oppressive conformity and pers supporting personal journey and personal exploration, the church has opted for uniformity. At one point in my professional life, I was considering changing uh, to a different denomination. This is before my unity years. And uh, I was meeting with the head of the uh, denomination and uh, we were kind of going over what it would take. And then they, he, he said, 
you know, we would have a meeting, uh, you know, at the service, um, you'd have to renounce your previous affiliations. And I said, I'd have to renounce them. I, I can't just say I want to become this. I have to say, I renounce these previous things. I can't just say I'm no longer this. No, I have to renounce them. I, that just stopped me cold. I couldn't go further. I was unwilling to renounce the stepping stones that got me to there where I was because that was part of who I am. This was part of what brought me to this latest stepping stone. I'm going, not going to renounce my past. This idea of renouncing comes from the traditional idea of baptism. Do you renounce Satan? Do you renounce evil? Well, yeah, we could say that, but the question is who gets to define what's evil? Right? If evil is someone who's wearing buttons on their shirt, I don't know if I'm buying that definition, right? Do I renounce evil? <sighs> you know, in unity, we have this thing at the beginning of the service, there is but one power and one presence in the universe and in my life. That says there's no such, that means there's no such thing as evil. There is only good. Unity thinking you don't have to renounce evil because there's no such thing of it. It's a, it's a, it's a category based in fear of our minds. When we think there's evil, there, there is. But in reality, according to this idea, there isn't one. And by the way, you are free to believe that or not believe that. You're still welcome to come to unity. You're free to say it at the beginning of the service or not say it. When Peggy or Janet says, would you say with me these words? They really mean that as an invitation. It's not required. It's an interesting thought. You might, uh, you might contemplate it. Is there only one power? Or do I believe that the world is a struggle between two powers, good and evil? And unity, thinking, we, we think of the world as, as good. And you're completely free to believe that or not believe it or play around with it as much as you want. You are still welcome. You're welcome to be a member of unity. You're welcome to not be a member. It's all good. By the way, I got in, uh, I was in a discussion this week on whether unity is a cult. Uh, some folks um, who are members here receive uh, emails from time to time from family members saying unity is a cult please be careful, you're, uh, you're being uh, led down a rosy path that will end in suffering and eternal pain and damnation. So uh, I'd like to uh, just point out in terms of uh, the use of that word, uh, unity is, is not a cult by the usual meaning of the definition of cult. A cult by definition means a closed group that's hard to get into, has very high standards to get into. You have to say and do and believe all sorts of things in order to get into the cult. And it's also hard to get out of it. That by definition is what a cult is and usually has religious beliefs connected to it. And if you leave, like you could say the mafia, I guess, would has these kind of cult-like things. You, you have to prove yourself to get in and when you try to get out, it's hard to get out. So by those definitions, unity is certainly not a cult. It's easy to get in, right? All you have to do is fill out a card that has your name and your address on it. You don't have to say what you believe or why you believe it or what you don't believe. Your beliefs are completely irrelevant to whether you have an intention to join this group or not. And it's even easier to get out of Unity, especially unity of Kanawha Valley, because your membership is renewed on an annual basis. And if you don't renew your membership, you drop out, you drop off immediately. So uh, by those standards, unity is not a cult. Now, I do get the concerns of the family members. Does unity promote heresy? That's a good question. If the idea that God is within you is heresy, yes. 
Yes, because we tend to believe that God is within you. It's okay if you don't believe it, but that's just kind of what we believe. Quakers in England in the 16 and 1700s were burned at the stake for saying that God's spirit was in you. This is why William Penn came to uh, the Pennsylvania uh, because they were being killed for believing that God's light was within you, that the spirit of God was within you. So this is why, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, excommunication or heresy is the church's way of saying you're a dipstick. That's basically what that means. Stop being a dipstick or we'll kill you or you can't go to heaven or whatever else will happen. And this is why every Sunday I celebrate the heresy of the day. I'm not here to be oppressed by uh, being called a heretic or being suggested that I'm a theological dipstick. I am here to celebrate the fact that I believe that God's spirit is in you and is in every person. I renew my commitment to my spiritual path. It's about time for me to stop. I hope this has been an interesting uh, uh, few thoughts. I wanna end with this question. What if we, what if the church began to understand itself as a place where people could come to ask questions rather than receive answers from someone else? What if it became a place where people could consider what it means to be human, and that whatever answers you come up with that are okay because it's part of your journey. What if we focused on, rather than what people think, what if we focused on how people think and created space where people could have these kinds of connections? This is in fact the mission of Unity of Kanawha Valley to create a space where people can come together and feel accepted for whatever their journey is. Well, I wanna thank you for being with me today. I want to encourage you to uh, keep doing whatever it is you're doing. I hope it's making you happy. If you're suffering with what you're doing, that's okay too. We're all, we're all suffering in some way or another as we're walking our stepping stones. Thank you for being here. And uh, let's hear from uh, uh, Peggy and, uh, and that amazing band. Thank you, Sky. That was a wonderful message. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And now it's time for our offering. Um, if you'll repeat with me our offering blessing, we'll say that together. Divine love moving in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love, I trust God, and I am grateful. Amen. And as I said before, thank you so much for your donations that are keeping our church going. We are hoping to be back together soon. And with your donations, our church will be there waiting for us. So thank you for that. Okay, Rich. One in the spirit.
other Hand in hand and we'll spread the news together That God is in our land And we'll know by what family will have love By our love, yes, we'll know by what family will have love Praise to the Father From whom all things come times that we met together in that sanctuary and just that song just brings up so many memories and of us all being together and clapping and stomping and dancing and that was great thank you so much now let's take just a moment to bless our offering we thank you mother father god for these gifts that are forthcoming to support the ministry of this church we are humbled and in awe of the spirit that comes forward from this church to do such good in the community and in the hearts of the givers. We know that we will be together soon. We have faith in that, dear God, and we are one in your spirit, and we celebrate this truth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And now let's go for a peace song, Rich. Do we have any birthdays? I see Christine's, Christine's hand is going up. Yay. Birthday, Christine, anyone else? Anyone else? I um, need to switch to gallery view. Anybody else have a birthday? Let's sing happy birthday to Christine. Okay, let's do it. One of your favorite musicians, Christine, Frank DeBreo will be leading us in that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome.
Well, uh, great to have everybody. Ouch. Feel <laughs> free to unmute. And, uh, look, look, you're unmuted. You're unmuted. unmuted the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Rich, can you mute yourself again? I'm unmuted. <laughs> Sounds like we're in a state space warp. <laughs> Hi, Patricia. <laughs> Mary Beth, you got some kids on the call? Mm -mm. Oh, she's on mute. See. Well, I hope everyone has a wonderful day today. Hi, Robert. Great to have you here. Hi, Ernie. Hey. Hey, Patty. Hi. Hi. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hello. Hi, Laura. Hi, everybody. Oh, hey. my gosh. There's hey. Everett. There's Freddie. Hello, Freddie. Everett's. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, Everett's gotten to be so big. No. Oh, wow. Oh, over here. oh how sweet. <laughs> I'm making bread. Yeah, that was excellent this morning. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Great message. Was. That, that, was, that really moved me when my daughter sent oh, that that text right great. in the middle of the message. It was like, yeah. wow. Right. That's his opinion counts. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Well, love and miss you guys. Yeah. Miss you. You ready to bail? Rich, thanks for doing so such an amazing job as usual. Good service. Anyone have plans to get outside today? It sounds looks like a beautiful day. Right. <laughs> Harvey, Phyllis. I'm meeting my family to go, go for a hike in Eleanor. Very right. good. Right. Oh, I bet Eleanor is beautiful today with those big fields. We'll see. <laughs> Harvey, are you going to Kanawha State Forest? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Hey everybody. Sky, Sky, just so you know, a dip switch is a term for dual inline package. <laughs> and it was created. We made you new. <laughs> it was created when circuit boards were being uh, built, and you'd have eight switches on this dual inline package that was soldered to the circuit board. And you could flip the dip switches to create a binary code that would change parameters for that circuit board. That's what a dip switch is. <laughs> Always happy to help. Yeah. You need to use it. As long as it turns up to EE. Yeah. I, I, I knew how to use it. I don't, didn't know what it was. So thank you for that.
Were there any yeah, other words that, that people used when you were growing up? Uh, dipstick was, for some reason, the word that we used in New England. Was there some other word that you were? Uh, Presbyterians were a little more graphic. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of word did they use? Well, I don't know what I was saying right here. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, dipstick was like. I remember oh, the word twerp a lot. The word what? Twerp. 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 A W A R P. These were the elementary school One words twerp. before we graduated to yeah. the words that we can't say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, dipstick wasn't ours. <laughs> 